Questions to all of these different things that we need in AWS, you can copy the policy that I have. I have different resources already listed here. If you, I don't know if you, I can't make this bigger, but you're gonna add the name of your Lambda into here, right? So I'm gonna take pictures as we go so that I can add it to the notes that you're gonna get. So I'm gonna take a screenshot of all of this. Right, and I will show you how I got here after we go through the next few steps. Um, S3 bucket permissions so that we're, we are in the Lambda. Actually, I probably should make this easier to follow. Okay, so this is where I'm adding the notes so that you can follow along with the, the notes. So we're adding the policies. I, I called it Dynamo S3 Lambda full access rule because it's just easier for me since I have a whole bunch of websites, right? Like I don't wanna have to do, redo this every time. This Amazon S3 full access and Amazon S3 object Lambda execution, those are, you just type that into here and then you select those, right? And then this one, the AWS Lambda uh, basic execution rule, I created those and some of these might be overlapping, but it works. So, you know, if there's a DevOps or cloud engineer that specializes in this, yeah, this is a hack, I know but it's working. <laughs> okay, so then I got to this screen by going to here. Okay, so then all you do is type I am at the top of the screen right here, and that's already in the notes right here. Right here's I am, I click on roles. Here's roles. That gets me to this right here. The reason I'm showing you that I'm typing them into here is because AWS is notorious for changing their layout. So today is September 16, 2024. By October 16th, it might be completely different, but you can always find your way back by typing in the main thing that you're looking for up here. So you might be able to type in roles, I don't know, but type in I am no matter what. And then you wanna get to the roles that you see on the left-hand side. R-O-L-E-S, right? And so now I'm gonna show you how to get to this one that is customer managed. I created it, it worked to solve whatever kept misfiring before. So I have selected them all, but I'm gonna add it, I'm gonna add it with, I'm gonna add the Lambda that we just created with JSON. And that's how we got to this image that we're at right now. Okay, so then after I clicked on there, I'm gonna click on JSON. And as we're going through this, I'm also checking to see that I have like fairly good notes. I mean, it would be really difficult to add a, a note for every single thing I did. And yeah, I know that there's programs that take pictures of your screen as you go, but they also don't obfuscate my uh, login information. That's why I don't use those. But in any case, here's the JSON, right? And here is where we are. I already have some of these, so I'm not gonna remove them from mine. Okay, but I will give you this so that you know what it looks like, right? So like, this is the name of my Dynamo table. This is the name of one of my lambdas. And then I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this after I've added the next lambda and put it into the uh, files that I'm giving you so that you have at least the example you should be able to copy and paste it if you named your table conversations. You're just gonna need to get your own um, like ARN number for your stuff, right? To put in there. So then I'm gonna go to edit. And I, I prefer using JSON to edit stuff with. So we're gonna add a new statement. And this one is gonna be statement three and we're gonna allow. And what we're adding is the Lambda Okay, so I'm gonna, instead of doing this manually myself, well, and actually I could find it right here. So the action that I want, and I'm looking at the instructions that I got out of OpenAI. Um, this is what it is telling me to do for the Lambda execution role. Okay, so then version statement allow. Okay, so this is what I need to allow deep fake. So I haven't actually named my bucket. It's telling me what to name my bucket, my dynamo table. And it has these asterisks. So I don't want to use those because I don't want to 
give it access to tables that don't exist because I don't know if AWS will somehow find a way to create tables that I didn't intend to create and then bill me for those tables. So I'm, I'm going to stay away from the asterisks in this section. There are sections where I do use the asterisks because I'm really clear on the policy definitions. So I'm going to copy and paste this, okay, and then so I'm going to give it this, okay, so this is for I probably should have copied the name of this first. And because I have the team license, like I don't worry about OpenAI scraping my data. But even if they could, like honestly, I, I don't think I'm so important that they would, you know, that they're gonna call the president to tell them, oh my God, we look at what Elsa is typing into her command line today. You know, like I honestly don't have that sense of self-importance yet. Maybe after we actually start detecting some deep fakes using the gamification system. But even then, you know, like if this could really save the world, because I thought about this a lot, like if this could really be helpful so that we detect when a AI are going rogue and I miss the opportunity to monetize um, because I'm putting this out here this way instead of submitting it straight to the Department of Defense, like then in essence, like if really I think my product is that great and it could save the world, I would rather more people have it. You know, honestly, because I don't have a shortage of ideas and this stuff doesn't stop expanding. So there's a lot of ways to monetize. And yeah, like if I was working at OpenAI and I was like, oh my God, we could destroy the planet. And I was under NDA, but it means like either destroying the planet or me getting to keep my millions, right? Like what would I do? Well, I would have said something if it was really that significant with all the, all the commotion they were creating. That's just my opinion but I think it's a fair one. So that's why I'm like just making this available as the demo for how to get this stuff to work. Um, Cause I think it encompasses a lot, but anyway, back to the, what we're doing here is, um, so I gave it the name of the thing that we're modifying. We gave it the stuff that it's telling me to do. And then I need to get, go back over here. I lost track of the name of the Lambda we just wrote. So notice I'm just typing Lambda into the search bar. And then I'm gonna go to my lambdas. I'm gonna find the one we just put through right now. And it was, um, was it this one? It's this one. So we're just trying to get it to turn into bytes. This is the name of the lambda. This is my lambdas, A-R-N. This is my lambdas, A-R-N. Okay, and then we also want to create the S3 bucket. So instead of me letting it dictate to me what it thinks my S3 bucket should be named, I'm going to go over here. Buckets. Okay, so I'm going to make a bucket called deep fake detection, deep fake detection. Okay, and then I don't think I need any of that other stuff. Um, I'm gonna add the tag here because now I have like a lot of, oh man, I forgot uh, bucket tags and organized buckets. Okay, deep fake, deep fake detection. And then the value is optional. We're just gonna add that tag and just leave it there. Okay, and then I'm not gonna do anything here. Just cause I don't really need to, okay? So these, like remember that what we're doing here is our very generic proof of concept. You can definitely go down the rabbit hole and add a whole bunch of stuff. Um, okay, so now we've created our bucket. So let's create our bucket so we can get our ARN. Did I click on that? Oh, damn, I forget sometimes this doesn't let you to underscores deep fake detection what i don't remember creating a but bucket like that it already exists okay well if it already exists i'm curious like where is this alleged button bu bucket i don't see one there's no deep fake detection button sometimes in aws like the It'll tell you that something is there and it's really not. Like, so if I would have clicked on save, it would have done it anyway. 
they would have saved it anyway. Now, I don't know why AWS does it that way, but they do. So then we're going to add our tag. We're going to call it deepfake detection. And I have gotten in the habit of adding the word for what it is at the end because then it gets really overwhelming. So actually, I'm going to call this bucket because then when you're looking at your ARNs and stuff, like sometimes you have to list them. And you're like, oh my God, like I named everything the same thing, but I don't know what. So like this is an object. Did I call it bucket or bud bud get bucket? So that's just something that's helped me probably again because of dyslexia. It helps me to be able to see where it's coming from with the naming convention more easily. Um, so now I'm going to create my bucket. OK, so here's my deep fake detection bucket. And I should be able to see the ARN for it. So then the name of my bucket is this. And then we'll copy the, this is my bucket. This is my bucket. And then we want to see the ARN. And then let's see what was the other thing that we were editing for. Oh, it's for Dynamo. So then Dynamo, you should have configured before you got to this point. So that you can get you can get through this if you haven't configured your Dynamo database, you need to make sure that you have that. And you can create more tables, um, but I I personally do not like doing that because I don't know at what point AWS starts charging me for stuff. And I actually I'm gonna just I don't use this I know I don't and I haven't seen them bill me for this because I've never used it. I think that. Yeah, see provisioned, like I would not use provisioned because it does start to bill you. I've never used it. That's probably why they've never billed me for it. And I feel like since I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it and chat messages, line chain, chat messages, line chain, indexes, 19 kilobytes. See, this one's already like, it already has kind of a lot of data in there. I do need to clean it out at some point, but okay, I'm gonna, going to leave that alone for right now. So conversations. So this is the the Dynamo database that we're using that we created. Um, add tag, move tags. Mm, I don't need to do that stuff to it. I just want to see the ARN for this for my Dynamo table. So my resource based on demand. Oh, it's also on demand, but it doesn't have the same stuff as the other one. The other one was like really expensive, like from the day, from day one. That's why I don't use it. Here's the ARN for this one. So you should really be careful with how you create the stuff in AWS. Like people have gone bankrupt, like being careless with this stuff. That's that's that was the biggest part of the reason why I was so reluctant to like make courses was because I know that people get trigger happy, right? I have, and then you create stuff that um ends up costing you a ton of money you didn't know would end up costing you money so just saying like be really careful with how you're creating your resources or how you're distributing your resources none of this has ever like gone off the rails for me but i also turned off the stuff that i noticed was billing me excessively um for crazy stuff like the table i just pointed out so i'm gonna put in here this is the dynamo table Okay, so it's called conversations. Remember, I have like a bunch of these, right? So there's a way to sift through the data. Um, I don't have it indexed that I know of. Yeah, there's like nothing here that's too crazy that I wouldn't be able to, to like take advantage of in some way or another. There's a way to iterate through your messages. So if I look at my conversations, I'm kind of curious to see like what's in there. Um, explore table items just so you can see that it really does save the conversation for you. Okay, so like these strings that I have right here, these are the auto-generated strings that I get when I, when if you copy the HTML directly from the way I gave it to you, right? It's these conversation strings that are random numbers that get saved to here so that the as the person is talking back and forth and having a conversation right here with the LLM, it's it's keeping track of like we're talking this is the same conversation so if their internet connection drops 
and they, they still haven't refreshed the page to move away from that session ID that's a random number that's not the same thing as the one that's tied to the session cookie ID, then they're, then they're able to continue the conversation because it was created with that sense of redundancy in place. Um, but if you are looking at it over here, uh, um, 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 there's like a place in here that stores like the URL string. So it should, it might be in the prompt, like it's already in the code. So like in the code, it'll tell you like who, who it's coming from. And I could add another column here. Um, I could create another item, but I'm not gonna mess with that right now. But in any case, like th this will continue the conversation string. And I actually was curious to see if we had any from from the shrinko.me website, just so you can see what the conversation strings look like. And a lot of these ended up in here because I was testing the lambdas the other day. Put the pretend you are, pretend you are, let's see if we can see what the, oh, that's so cute. Okay, so this, they were like responding to Winnie the Pooh, right? That is like too cute. Um, and they, pr they probably just like asked the one question. You should be able to see like the full conversation threads. So you can see here, someone's trying to exploit the endpoints so like it, it can't tell them that because they don't, like it's instructed not to. So these are some of the guardrails. And then I believe these were my own tests. Yeah, these are some of my own tests. And I wonder if you can see, oh, okay. And so the, re the other reason why I did, did this this way is because I wanted to be able to send all of the results to a CSV so when the Dynamo database gets overwhelmed, like I can just store them, I can create another Lambda, put them in S3 because it's really cheap using CSVs, and then I never actually like incur costs storing all this data that are overwhelming, right? And um, let's see if there's anything else. There's not really much else I can show you. So remember that this is a, no SQL database, so you're not going to be able to run relational queries like SQL queries on it. Um, and if you wanted to make your table way more fancy and be able to like sift through the websites, I would personally, I would just add another column here that says like website <laughs> or something, you know, because you are getting that back as one of the attributes. And I wish I could see like the Items. I, w I wonder if I'm actually like erasing all my own items. Actually, now that I'm looking at this, I actually had somebody make this database for me and it's worked great, but I'm just now seeing, no, that makes sense. It's only 286 items. That makes sense, actually. Yeah, like I thought that maybe you could um, see all of them, but no, this makes sense. Sorry, I, I don't mean to be going down the rabbit hole here, down a rabbit hole here. I'm just showing you like, this is what your Dynamo table looks like um and then you can export it to s3 i believe it charges you if you do it this way i don't know for sure but for right now like we're not too worried about that and i think that these are okay here we go all right so here are the full conversations all right this is what i wanted to show you here this is a different website that is showing you like the full conversation threads So then this person was actually asking them about like the products that I offer. Um, and then they logged off the conversation. So this one is, th so here is the prompt. So remember I was telling you that I don't always put the prompts inside of the code that is forward facing so that the people using these LLMs can't just like copy and paste that off of there. This is like an example of where the prompt, where you can see the prompt Right, and I think this prompt actually is in the HTML. I don't remember, um, but this one's like, for example, um, this website right here, and it's called shrinko.me, right? And this one is like to help people that are like facing some kind of emotional crisis as a 
as like a as a band aid for the meantime till they can talk to somebody. So that like the back end code you're seeing is they talk to the like the person, right? Hi Winnie. Hi Winnie, I recently stopped talking to my bio family and it's weird. Right? So then it should give us back a response here. And then it is can you tell me more about why you stopped talking to your bio family? Right? So like I created this last summer because I was going through some stuff and I was like, I don't want to I don't I don't want to go deal with the VA because it's a lot of paperwork and it's like annoying to talk to a person sometimes. But so then I built it for myself really and I was like, well, maybe like other people would want to use it. So then if I look at my Dynamo database, right? So then if I go back to my conversations, I should be able to see that today is the it says zero eight under let me see so it should come up now i wonder how long it takes to write to the database interesting I wonder if it's saving it in some cache or something 2024 am i going in the wrong direction this is the right direction Okay, let's see. Mm, they are mean to my friends. And it makes it hard for my friends to want to ask me to join them. That sounds tough. So see, like, so then I prompted this one not to give me any answers, just to like keep dig helping me dig deeper. So it should have saved it under September 16, 2024. And I did, I'm remembering now, I did ask the person, like, it doesn't need to save every conversation thread, I think. So I don't know, like, at what point it pushes it into this console here. Um, It might be like, I don't know, it might be once I log off over there. That's kind of weird. But anyway, if if this doesn't, if this doesn't show me the conversation thread there, then I'll know to come back and check on this. Um, but it does eventually come up. That's all I really know. And over here is when I was testing some stuff with the lambdas and it was like, like I should have deleted a bunch of this stuff so that it wouldn't obfuscate the stuff that is actually working. But I can see the conversations here. I, sorry, I just like I'm just like kind of like curious. Like, why isn't it recording this? But it has been recording since very recently. Hmm. Oh my God! Now I can't even push this video up. Zero eight twenty six, zero eight twenty nine, zero nine sixteen. Okay, maybe I can use this video. Zero nine zero five. They're not in any kind of order. Well, that's annoying. Okay. Twenty twenty three. I'm ridiculous. Look, it's right here. Okay, so I can use this video. Sorry, friends. Okay, I can use this video. So this is this is what we're giving permissions to. So you can see there that like it is actually correctly saving to the databases. Um, and here, I don't know why these th these are just a different formation of those strings. Okay, but anyway, like if you need to see the full conversation so that you're like you've convinced yourself, I guess that th like this is actually working. I re see, I, I recently stopped talking to my bio family, right? And so here's the redundancy of the, I'm sorry, not the redundancy. Well, yeah, it's it's like got fault tolerance. So if the thing drops, if their, if their Wi-Fi drops, it doesn't erase their thread as long as they don't close out the window. And that was just by design to protect myself from having to worry about uh, cookies. Um, but like we've discussed before, this deep fake one does use cookies because we're using the location as part of the authentication method. And so like in here, in here somewhere on, um, I wish I could remember off the top of my head, like in here somewhere is the name of the website that is 
using the, it's the exact same LLM over and over. Like this is the same LLM over and over. All I did here was I created a, so it's gonna end that session now um, and you won't be able to go back to that conversation. But all I did was create a WordPress website that's like super lean and simple. And I've actually gotten compliments over here where people can leave information. Um, this doesn't work anymore, by the way. I like quit my Beehive subscription. Um, but anyway, like they left a compliment saying like this website's great because it loads really fast and it's like pretty simple. Right, so then now when I go, so then I added iframes to these, or not iframes, I added web pages to here that are built exactly the same. See, like, I don't know if you can see like the exact same generic format. So for people that are used to using WordPress, like web devs that use WordPress, like you can put this into your stuff with an iframe into any of your WordPress pages. That's what I've done with, um, I don't think I put it into my main one, but like like here, like these are all iframes. So this chatbot, see exact same layout. It's just an iframe inside of whatever other structure I want to use. That's why I chose this very generic structure. And like I've tested it with all sorts of different kinds of websites and it's always worked, right? And like this gets you out of a lot of the legalities of keeping track of cookies, but at the same time being able to create a conversation back and forth. And the only difference between these is that these were not I created these before there was the vision API that at least that I knew of or how to use at the time. Um, but now that we have the vision API, that's where we're adding more lambdas and more functionality. Uh, and I don't know that this is the right video to use for the, yeah, I think I'm just gonna make this video as the one that kind of show, showcases what I'm doing. So I'm gonna follow the advice to put these videos like how to do the thing in the middle of the night Right, and then just keep creating the content separately um, and make it easier for people who buy the courses to just follow the content. I think this is more me like convincing you, making sure that I'm double checking that all the stuff I'm claiming is actually working. But you saw it yourself, like that is how I am able to create these conversations that are doing the same thing that ChatGPT would, except over here I have a very safe guardrails and controlled mechanism for N not just n not tracking the person, right? And but also making sure that I can keep a conversation thread. And also, um, I thought it would be really valuable as more people used to this. And there have been I've been like really impressed with how many people actually sign up for the newsletter. So I need to like make sure that I get that taken care of, right? Um, but I've been incredibly. I was really intrigued because my first degree is in psychology. Like, what are people going to start to experience once we have more AI automation rolling out and it starts to replace more and more people? Not just like the automation with, um, with like code, right? But also, for example, like my, um, my door locks. Like they're on automation now, so I don't need somebody to come in and switch out the door locks when one of the Airbnb guests leaves because. Like now my door locks on automation, like reset themselves when there's a new person, right? Or I can manually reset them with a few presses of a button. So like now like the, um, what are they called? Like the people that, that specialize in fixing door locks, um, like now they don't really have a job the same way anymore, if at all, if they didn't keep up with the electronic side of digital locks, right? So like, the, like that's just one minor example of like the, the wave of change and I was a teacher like how do how do like for example high school physics teachers like compete with being able to learn physics from an AI model now you don't how do like if you were a tutor like how do you even once a kid learns how to use chat GPT and like even children like tiny little children are able to use it especially the voice feature how do you even start to to feel relevant and I thought it would be really interesting to capture all that data in an anonymous way because obviously like people are going to talk to this more in a, and differently than they do to um, like other, uh, like humans, right? And that was a big part of the image here. Like I, I took forever to create this image. It's like the robot is the one asking for therapy, it looks like, right? <laughs> um, anyway, I'm just going down a rabbit hole now. I'm just like showing you the different use cases for once you learn how to build this, this very simple thing that uh, it becomes simple once you get it running. Um, but once you build this part, like you're good to go for so many things. And I'm going to stop this video here and upload it later today. Um, I hope you have a great day. I'm going to continue like plowing through these courses so I can actually make them accessible and easier to follow. But like you can, as you can see though, it's, it's like 
it's not straightforward. It is like kind of cumbersome at first, but then it gets really easy and replicable. And that's the whole point of automation. Later's homies.